This is Science by Vincent. Earth will never be hit by a meteor. Um, this is false. It's impossible, and it may be a big lie or a scam. But let's talk about the uh, <clears throat> few things here. Um, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't believe for a second that this is possible. I mean, I know we hear this a lot. Um, we have a current mission headed to a meteor right now, planning on crashing into it to deflect it with the idea that someday a killer asteroid or meteor or something like that will or even a comet will hit the earth and kill us all like the dinosaurs but let's get into this a little bit uh, let's talk about the earth's defenses for one <clears throat> um, for starters uh, we're not hopelessly defenseless against this anyway um, a meteor coming by and as you see the figure above first of all even if it gets all the way to the inner planets which is difficult for it to do anything large enough that would resurface the planet or cause mass extinction uh, it's going to have a hell of a time getting past Jupiter past Saturn especially Jupiter um, a lot of you don't know this but it looks like Jupiter was specifically designed to protect us and to protect the inner planets especially Earth it has a massive uh, magnetic field and uh, it's it just sucks in everything that goes by it um, but even if it got by that and got into or Earth's orbit um, first of all it's, as you can see in the figure above it's going to have to catch the planet we're moving at 66,600 miles an hour supposedly going around the Sun which I don't particularly believe but uh, if that were true though um, it's going to have to come in at the specifically right traje trajectory just to catch up I mean if it has to catch up to the earth that means it has to be moving quite a bit faster to begin with or it has to hit the earth head on which is a problem for logic um, or it would have to skim us maybe skimming by us and then release all its energy but uh, uh, no matter how it hits, no matter how it hits us, it's just not going to make it through the atmosphere. Is my contention. Anyway, let's uh, let's talk about it. let's go back to Jupiter though for a minute. Um, you know, if maybe a lot of you have forgotten already, but uh, Jupiter absorbed quite a large uh, comet that hit it. Shoemaker leaving nine some years ago, and there's an image here above of some, of it hitting some one of the one of the pieces. It, first, the thing first thing Jupiter did is it its its gravitational pull and its magnetic field it crushed it before it even got anywhere near Jupiter. It busted it into a million pieces, <clears throat> and then it when it when it did uh, get close enough to Jupiter, as you can see here what it did and this picture is very illuminating actually is it released all of its energy before it even made it through the atmosphere that's what this picture is this is a real picture from uh, I believe the Hubble Space Telescope <clears throat> observing this incident happening and this is absolute 100 percent proof of what I'm saying if you have this much pent-up energy and you get anywhere near a magnetic field, a gravitational field, it's going to quickly release that energy before it even makes any sort of an impact. So this is totally illogical. It's just fear-mongering, and it's it's not right. It's it's not right to do that to people. Um, I'm trying to tell you the truth. Uh, we have actual telemetry. We have actual evidence, visual and otherwise, here that even something the size of this comet did not penetrate the atmosphere of Jupiter with that much energy it just did not now as you can see in the, this picture which is already rolled over um, this is a little bit of uh, evidence here showing you uh, off to the right hand side um, that it released its energy prior to even getting into Jupiter's atmosphere this is just cut and dry um, there's other pictures out there too. You can find more of these that show 
uh, most just about all of its energy was released prior to going through Jupiter's atmosphere. The only parts that made it through would not have been planet killing. I mean, it was just it was more just force. It wasn't the it wasn't the structure of the comet. It pretty much destroyed it way before, way in the upper atmosphere before it got into what we consider the atmosphere of Jupiter. Now I want to switch gears a little bit. As you can see uh, in the image above, uh, there's there's you know a million different images like this. Um, showing some horrendously huge you know, meteor or whatever an asteroid headed right towards you know the united states you know and, and this sort of thing um you often see these sort of images i mean they're trying to do the same thing that ain't to show ancient aliens does they're trying to they have a narrative and they're this is what they're trying to convince you that we're just sitting ducks that uh it's all just random there's no rhyme or reason to anything at any point in time in the future. Something like this could just hit us and wipe us out and we're just sitting ducks. That's the narrative that they're trying to sell you. They're no better than ancient aliens. The people at NASA, physicists, uh, some of them should just be ashamed of themselves. This is just sensationalism, period. So, um, But here, I'll show you now by comparison in the next image. Um, this is pretty much the scale. I mean, this would actually be, if you can even see it on here, where the red arrow is pointing, that would represent a 100-mile-wide meteor compared to the scale of the Earth. And, uh, you know, it's not like the previous image, as you can see here. I mean, come on, man. I mean, this is, you know, preposterous already. You can see that, you know, their image, you know, the meteor looks... You know, the size of the United States, and in reality, it's this, you know. So this, this is, you know, this is why you got to be careful who you're listening to, and not, not be, not get fooled by this. But uh, you know, let's talk about, uh, you know, some previous impacts, you know, because they'll often, this will be the kickback at me, is that, you know, well, what about this? You know, here's the famous, you know, meteor crater in Arizona. Surely that, you know, that made it through the atmosphere. I mean, you know, what are you talking about, Vincent? You know, and, uh, you know, my, my comeback to them is, first of all, the age of 4 billion years assigned to the Earth is false. At best, we're 300 million years old. I've made this case in my other videos. This, an impact uh, like this, yeah, that possibly made it through our, our uh, atmosphere, but that's not a planet killer. That's more of a localized explosion. I mean, that's not a planet killer. That's not 100 miles wide. That, 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 that's easy. We can absorb that. That doesn't create extinction events. So that, you know, I'm not buying it. Now, getting back to it, though, here's here's one that they claim caused the extinction event, and this is getting back to my earlier point about the Earth being 4 billion years old or 300 million years old, is uh, apparently, and I, I don't disagree with the evidence, there's a massive, you know, horrendously huge impact crater, uh, and this is the one of those famous 100-mile-wide, you know, meteors which even on this photo is misrepresented that's not that's not a hundred miles but uh, even if it was um, my point on the age of the earth is the only my contention on this is the only way that made it through is it predated the atmosphere um, there's just no way I mean you, something that large with that much pent-up energy will not make it through the atmosphere as soon as it feels the gravity uh, any localized gravity or gravity from the sun or jupiter or even earth it would it would instantly bust apart and release that much energy it's it's just basic physics at this point and not only that it's just logical um and i don't know who would even fight me on this and i don't know why anybody would want there to be such bad news but uh getting into it here a little more is uh you know then there's the famous uh you know, apparently that, that one that hit the Gulf of Mexico is apparently the one that wiped out the dinosaurs. But uh, I would challenge, you know, anybody out there, including all the evolutionists, that, uh, you know, we need to, you know, uh, make up our minds on this one way or the other. Uh, you know, we're a little bit contradicted here because, uh, first of all, I, I thought, 
uh, maybe I'm confused, but I thought the, the narrative was that dinosaurs became birds. You know, I mean, they can't be wiped out by a meteor and then become birds. So, you know, let's fish or cut bait, to put it politely. Um, you know, either they're wiped out by a meteor or they evolved or they survived and evolved to become birds. We can't have it both ways. And, you know, this is just, uh, this is silly already. The argument is just silly. They want, they want you to believe both. I'll be honest with you. I've talked to enough physicists and enough scientists and, and, you know, enough college professors too. And I mean, they want you to believe both. They want, they want to keep the options open for both. They just will not take a stand and they, they, you know, they know they're contradicting themselves, but, you know, come on already. But in conclusion, I'll just leave you uh, with this image. Uh, try and remember this next time you hear about, you know, something coming to threaten the earth or to, uh, you know, kill all of us. So just, re just remember this image and have a good day.